What's good, y'all? Yeah, let's check out Watch Mojo's top 10 types of horror movie victims. I've been wanting to check this uh, video out for a while now. Let's get right into it. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me see if I can name them all, man. I guess I would be like the token black guy in the movie. They always die first, y'all. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there's the, the, you know, the rich guy and rich white guy, rich white girl, uh, the uh. slut. The virgin that's gonna survive, you know, the final girl, always the virgin. Um, uh, the nerd, the jock, uh, the best friend, which usually, it's they, 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 you know, and the kind of best friend, but you know, usually the black girl to the white girl. But uh, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of the different, you know, um, if you think about it, horror victims. You can name a lot of people, man. The the, the parents. Uh, you know, sometimes the parents get it, sometimes, you know, teachers get it, um, so, sometimes they even kill the, the cat and the dog, so that's, that's a victim, animals, uh, let's check this out, though. We weren't doing anything, we were just messing up. Friday the 13th. Pardon me, but is that a giant bullseye on your back? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie victim types. Awesome movies, man, this time. The best movie of all time. Before we Night on Elm Street. publish new videos and, and fight me if, if it ain't. Sure to okay. For more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most popular and prevalent character archetypes found within the whole. <laughs> I forgot world. about the, yeah, the, the, the weed here, right? The druggie. Have to die, but they often suffer the wrath of each film's main villain as intended victims or targets. Oh, then the old person, the old farmhand. Oh. And that shot the tail about the, the danger, right? Some major oh, along the way. Jason's still alive. Don't you go in them woods. Want to talk about Number oh, 10, the fat guy, right? The non there are of no course. Sasquatches. <laughs> there are no big feet. We start our list with what's perhaps the ghosts. most frustrating victim type okay. of all. The non-believers. These are the characters well, that believe, simply get by them, right, acknowledge people. any of the creepy, which can be those same categories that I said talk about. That happen to be going on around them in the film. There's no such thing as ghosts. The non-believers often arrive armed with an explanation for just about everything. Yes. Until it's too, too late. late. <laughs> These characters are usually separated from There's the no such thing to do as Freddy Krueger. They end up becoming <laughs> mincemeat for their troubles. There's all in your head. Give me your head. Try to come in. There's nothing out here. Number nine, <laughs> the redneck. He looks like he's going to yes, walk it off. Yes, I said that. Not every horror film has a redneck-like character in it, but when they do, they're often in cahoots with the killers rather than the victims. Ah, whoa, that's, good. That's, that's true. That's, especially take the chainsaw massacre and stuff like that. Sometimes appear on the other end of things, though. Yeah. Like the tragically doomed Jake and Bobby Joe from Sam Raimi's Evil, Evil Dead. Dead. Yes. I can't breathe. I, I can't breathe. In this sense, the redneck is usually hard-headed and stubborn, and it's these qualities that often prevent this victim type from surviving to the end. Do you find it impossible to compromise or collaborate with others in even the direst of situations? Then you just might be the redneck in a horror film. <laughs> Mother's Day. Number eight, the fat one. Rule number one for surviving zombie land, cardio. Okay, we know it may not be PC to use this term, but political correctness was never exactly the calling card of 1980s slasher movies. Mm. But I think you're really out of line. This was where the character archetype of the fat one what? was often found. Usually as the butt of a joke or as some sort of comic relief. <sighs> Poor fat bastard. Then again, there are also examples like Shelly from Friday the 13th Part 3. A lovable but socially awkward sort who uses cheap scares and masks mm -hmm. to hide his self-consciousness. Right. You be yourself. You look like this. You look Shelley like this. one of the franchise's most memorable and beloved characters. Yet even that fact didn't save him from dying at the hands of Jason Voorhees. Yeah, they thought he was pranking, but he wasn't. <laughs> Number seven, the love interest or the best, best friend. friend. Yes. I, I just said it. I just said it. You know you guys can talk. Whatever. Every Another awesome film. Wes Craven made some awesome films. This is films, where the love Rest in peace, Wes Craven. Characters come in. As moral support to the film, it follows a good movie. They, they show a lot of good Some of my favorite movies right here, man. romantically involved with or in a platonic relationship with the main character. And sometimes they even serve as one of the few survivors of a maniacal killer's attack. I'm so sorry I almost shot you. 
I like Kevin Woods too, man. Some people didn't like him, but I like him. Love interest or best friend is also just as likely to end up a victim, usually as a result of some courageous or heroic final stand, so that the hero can attain the sorry, Captain Sparrow. Rest in peace, guys. They couldn't have done it without you. Are you alright? Sean's dead. He said he's alright. That's just stone. Number six, the, the stoner. stoner. Yeah. Oh. Many of us might be able to identify with the stoner. After all, isn't there a small part of us that would just want to say, screw it? I'm getting as high as possible before I have to deal with this maniac stalking me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe that isn't the best of ideas now that we say it out loud, but that hasn't stopped the stoner from puffing away in countless horror movies. Sadly, kind of in the hood. this is usually the last thing they do before falling under the killer's blade. <laughs> One last bit of escapism before it all fades to black. Give me my ball back! Back to the hood. Excuse me. Excuse me, back to the hood. Because there was two leprechauns in the hood movies. Much like the yeah. usually none too bright stoner, the idiot is another victim type that's dead meat right from the start. <laughs> Alongside the non believers, as some of the horror yes, the police most and teachers and all that stuff like that, all they can to impede the progress of the heroes. They can align themselves with another victim type, the useless cop, and temporarily mm. imprison the heroes while the rest right. of the town gets cut up. Right. Or the authority figure could find other ways to abuse their power to get in the other character's way. No one in Forest Green wants to be reminded of what that maniac did here. That's why we changed the name. Although this victim type often sees the error of their ways before the film's end, this usually isn't enough to save them from death. Although the authority figure occasionally receives a nice scene of redemption before biting the dust. Number four, the jock. The or jock the jerk. or the jerk, which could be both. <laughs> The jock is a jerk. Look at that shit. Look, look. You love to hate him. <laughs> that was a crazy He's scene right now. Jerks of the horror movie universe. This character type is usually attached to one of the film's main characters as some sort of dysfunctional love interest, but this situation rarely lasts the entire film. This is because the jock or jerk is such an insufferable character, picking on almost everyone around them and alienating themselves from the rest of the group. <laughs> This usually leads to their demise by the film's killer, scared, alone, and without any friends to save them from their deadly, but just, desserts. Number three, the promiscuous girl. Can I say it? It might actually be unfair to label this as one gender <laughs> over another, because the let's fact. Be Sex equals death in many classic horror films. Still, the promiscuous girl serves a twofold purpose. Not only is she there to die after her prerequisite sex scene, she's right. also there to provide slasher and exploitation films with their expected amount of nudity. Exactly. Unfortunately, the promiscuous girl rarely, if ever, makes it to the end. Further emphasizing the connection between conservative 80s era values and old school horror flicks. Still, there are worse ways to go out, though, right? <laughs> Number two, the black guy, who always <laughs> dies first. Isn't it? <laughs> this one's simultaneously something of a misnomer, while at the same time remaining a statistic. No luck for me, y'all, in the horror Although movie. Films like 2017's Get Out <laughs> thankfully yes. modernized some yeah, of the Yeah, it kind of flipped it on his ear. Right, yeah, uh -huh. Minorities in the genre suffered for decades as victims, with very few making it to the end credits alive. Indeed, for every black protagonist, like Peter from George Romero's original Dawn of the Dead, we've had a slew of token African-American characters that are simply there to diversify the cast and increase the body count. Exactly. They may not always die first, but for the black guy, death is almost certain in the world of old-school horror. All right, man, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. See, that was, that was, just, that was, see, Jordan Murray made a statement with that one, though. Movie victim. Here are a few Race statements. to rights honorable mentions. So, the nerd. Fairy tales. 
<laughs> but the, that's my second favorite horror movie right there, man. Right now, on Elm Street. Three. Loud mouth, of course. Number one, the, the final, final girl or the virgin. Mother is talking to you. <laughs> the final girl is one of the most defining tropes of classic horror, especially within the slasher boom of the 1980s. The term is used to represent the pure, virginal, or otherwise wholesome main Told character right. that faces off with the killer in a climactic battle. Mm -hmm. The final girl is often aided by the love interest or best friend in this goal, and is usually successful. Barring, of course, any last-second sequel teases by the filmmakers. <laughs> Final Girl is also a character that often returns for those sequels, although history has shown us that even these brave, resourceful women end up falling to the Freddies and the Jasons of the world eventually. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day. I agreed with all of that, Watch Mojo. That was awesome, man. Didn't I tell you about that, man? Did I tell you Final Girl, Virginal, you know, it's always like that. Um, but yeah, Get Out kind of switched on that, you know, it wasn't a, you know, there's, there's been movies with, with the final men and stuff like that, um, like I said, Get Out, that was a, it was a male, and it was a black <laughs> male, and, you know, and they survived, so that, that was another good thing about that movie, but, uh, yeah, y'all go ahead and watch the, the original video, subscribe to Watch Mojo, subscribe to my channel, Deadpool Party, if y'all like my reaction, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and share, till next time, I'm out.